Roller chain or bush roller chain is the type of chain drive most commonly used for transmission of mechanical power on many kinds of domestic, industrial and agricultural machinery, including conveyors, wire and tube drawing machines, printing presses, cars, motorcycles, and bicycles. It consists of a series of short cylindrical rollers held together by side links. It is driven by a toothed wheel called a sprocket. It is a simple, reliable, and efficient means of power transmission. Though Hans Reynold is credited with inventing the roller chain in 1880, sketches by Leonardo da Vinci in the 16th century show a chain with a roller bearing. Construction of the chain There are actually two types of links alternating in the bush roller chain. The first type is inner links, having two inner plates held together by two sleeves or bushings upon which rotate two rollers. Inner links alternate with the second type. The outer links, consisting of two outer plates held together by pins passing through the bushings of the inner links. The bushingless roller chain is similar in operation though not in construction. Instead of separate bushings or sleeves holding the inner plates together, the plate has a tube stamped into it protruding from the hole which serves the same purpose. This is the advantage of removing one step in assembly of the chain. The roller chain design reduces friction compared to simpler designs, resulting in higher efficiency and less wear. The original power transmission chain varieties lacked rollers and bushings, with both the inner and outer plates held by pins which directly contacted the sprocket teeth. However this configuration exhibited extremely rapid wear of both the sprocket teeth, and the plates where they pivoted on the pins. This problem was partially solved by the development of bushed chains, with the pins holding the outer plates passing through bushings or sleeves connecting the inner plates. This distributed the wear over a greater area. However the teeth of the sprocket still wore more rapidly than is desirable, from the sliding friction against the bushings. The addition of rollers surrounding the bushing sleeves of the chain and provided rolling contact with the teeth of the sprockets resulting in excellent resistance to wear of both sprockets and chain as well. There is even very low friction as long as the chain is sufficiently lubricated. Continuous, clean, lubrication of roller chains is of primary importance for efficient operation as well as correct tensioning. Lubrication Many driving chains operate in clean environments, and thus the wearing surfaces are safe from precipitation and airborne grit, many even in a sealed environment such as an oil bath. Some roller chain is designed to have O-rings built into the space between the outside link plate and the inside roller link plates. Chain manufacturers began to include this feature in 1971 after the application was invented by Joseph Montano while working for Whitney Chain of Hartford. Connecticut O-rings were included as a way to improve lubrication to the links of power transmission chains, a service that is vitally important to extending their working life. These rubber fixtures form a barrier that holds factory-applied lubricating grease inside the pin and bushing wear areas. Further, the rubber O-rings prevent dirt and other contaminants from entering the inside of the chain linkages, where such particles would otherwise cause significant wear. There are also many chains that have to operate in dirty conditions, and for size or operational reasons cannot be sealed. Examples include chains on farm equipment, bicycles, and chainsaws. These chains will necessarily have relatively high rates of wear, particularly when the operators are prepared to accept more friction, less efficiency, more noise and more frequent replacement as they neglect lubrication and adjustment. Equals motorcycle chain lubrication equals, chains operating at high speeds comparable to those on motorcycles should be used in conjunction with an oil bath. For modern motorcycles this is not possible and most motorcycle chains run unprotected. Thus, motorcycle chains tend to wear very quickly relative to other applications. They are subject to extreme forces and have to operate in tough conditions being exposed to rain, dirt, sand and road salt. Motorcycle chains are part of the drivetrain to transmit the motor power to the back wheel. While properly lubricated chains can reach an efficiency of 98% or greater in the transmission and lubricated chains will significantly decrease performance and increase chain and sprockets wear. Two distinct types of aftermarket lubricants are available for motorcycle chains, spray-on lubricants and oil drip feed systems. 
spray lubricants may contain wax or PTFE. While these lubricants use tack additives to stay on the chain they can also attract dirt and sand from the road and over time produce a grinding paste that accelerates component wear. Oil drip feed systems continuously lubricate the chain and use light oil that does not stick to the chain. Research has shown that oil drip feed systems provide the greatest wear protection and greatest power saving. Variants in design If the chain is not being used for a high wear application, then one of the simpler types of chain may still be used. Conversely, where extra strength but the smooth drive of a smaller pitch is required, the chain may be siamesed. Instead of just two rows of plates on the outer sides of the chain, there may be three, four, or more rows of plates running parallel, with bushings and rollers between each adjacent pair, and the same number of rows of teeth running in parallel on the sprockets to match. Timing chains on automotive engines, for example, typically have multiple rows of plates called strands. Roller chain is made in several sizes, the most common American National Standards Institute standards being 40, 50, 60, and 80. The first digit, S, indicate the pitch of the chain in eighths of an inch, with the last digit being zero for standard chain, one for lightweight chain, and five for bush chain with no rollers. Thus, a chain with half-inch pitch would be a number 40 while a number 160 sprocket would have teeth spaced two inches apart, etc. Metric pitches are expressed in sixteenths of an inch. Thus a metric number A chain would be equivalent to an ANSI number 40. Most roller chain is made from plain carbon or alloy steel, but stainless steel is used in food processing machinery or other places where lubrication is a problem, and nylon or brass are occasionally seen for the same reason. Roller chain is ordinarily hooked up using a master link which typically has one pin held by a horseshoe clip rather than friction fit, allowing it to be inserted or removed with simple tools. Chain with a removable link or pin is also known as cotted chain, which allows the length of the chain to be adjusted. Half links are available and are used to increase the length of the chain by a single roller. Riveted roller chain has the master link riveted, or mashed on the ends. These pins are made to be durable and are not removable. Use. Roller chains are used in low to mid-speed drives at around 600 to 800 feet per minute. However, at higher speeds, around 2,000 to 3,000 feet per minute, V-belts are normally used due to wear and noise issues. A bicycle chain is a form of roller chain. Bicycle chains may have a master link, or may require a chain tool for removal and installation. A similar but larger and thus stronger chain is used on most motorcycles although it is sometimes replaced by either a toothed belt or a shaft drive, which offer lower noise level and fewer maintenance requirements. In older automobile engines from the United States and other countries, roller chains would traditionally drive the camshaft S, off the crankshaft, generating less noise than the gear drivers used in very high performance engines and offering more durability than the timing belt frequently used on more modern engines. Many modern automobile engines still use roller chains, which are more durable than timing belts. Chains are also used in forklifts using hydraulic rams as a pulley to raise and lower the carriage. However, these chains are not considered roller chains, but are classified as lift or leaf chains. Chainsaw cutting chains superficially resemble roller chains but are more closely related to leaf chains. They are driven by projecting drive links which also serve to locate the chain onto the bar. A perhaps unusual use of a pair of motorcycle chains is in the Harrier jump jet, where a chain drive from an air motor is used to rotate the movable engine nozzles, allowing them to be pointed downwards for hovering flight, or to the rear for normal forward flight, a system known as thrust vectoring. Where, the effect of wear on a roller chain is to increase the pitch, causing the chain to grow longer. Note that this is due to wear at the pivoting pins and bushes, not from actual stretching of the metal. With modern chains it is unusual for a chain to wear until it breaks, since a worn chain leads to the rapid onset of wear on the teeth of the sprockets, with ultimate failure being the loss of all the teeth on the sprocket. The sprockets suffer a grinding motion that puts a characteristic hook shape into the driven face of the teeth. The worn teeth no longer provide smooth transmission of power and this may become evident from the noise, 
the vibration or the variation in ignition timing seen with a timing light. Both sprockets and chains should be replaced in these cases, since a new chain on worn sprockets will not last long. However, in less severe cases it may be possible to save the smaller of the two sprockets, since it is always the larger one that suffers the most wear. Only in very lightweight applications such as a bicycle, or in extreme cases of improper tension, the chain will normally jump off the sprockets. The lengthening due to wear of a chain is calculated by the following formula. M equals the length of a number of links measured, S equals the number of links measured, P equals pitch. In industry, it is usual to monitor the movement of the chain tensioner or the exact length of a drive chain. A simpler method, particularly suitable for the cycle or motorcycle user, is to attempt to pull the chain away from the larger of the two sprockets. Any significant movement probably indicates a chain worn up to and beyond the limit. Sprocket damage will result if the problem is ignored. Equals bicycle chain wear equals, the lightweight chain of a bicycle with derailleur gears can snap because the pins inside are not cylindrical, they are barrel shaped. Contact between the pin and the bushing is not the regular line, but a point which allows the chain's pins to work its way through the bushing, and finally the roller, ultimately causing the chain to snap. This form of construction is necessary because the gear changing action of this form of transmission requires the chain to both bend sideways and to twist, but this can occur with a flexibility of such a narrow chain and relatively large free lengths on a bicycle. Chain failure is much less of a problem on hub geared systems since the parallel pins have a much bigger wearing surface in contact with the bush. The hub gear system also allows complete enclosure, a great aid to lubrication and protection from grit. Chain strength, the most common measure of roller chain strength is tensile strength. Tensile strength represents how much load a chain can withstand under a one-time load before breaking. Just as important as tensile strength is a chain's fatigue strength. The critical factors in a chain's fatigue strength is the quality of steel used to manufacture the chain, the heat treatment of the chain components, the quality of the pitch hole fabrication of the link plates, and the type of shot plus the intensity of shot pin coverage on the link plates. Other factors can include the thickness of the link plates and the design of the link plates. The rule of thumb for roller chain operating on a continuous drive is for the chain load to not exceed a mere one six or one ninth of the chain's tensile strength, depending on the type of master links used. Roller chains operating on a continuous drive beyond these thresholds can and typically do fail prematurely by a link plate fatigue failure. The standard minimum ultimate strength of the ANSI 29.1 steel chain is 12,500 x2. Internal lubrication x ring and o ring type chains greatly decrease wear by means of keeping in internal lubrication increasing chain life. The internal lubrication is inserted by means of a vacuum when riveting the chain together. Chain standards, standards organizations maintain standards for design, dimensions, and interchangeability of transmission chains. For example, the following table shows data from ANSI standard B29.1-2011 developed by the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. See the references for additional information. For mnemonic purposes, below is another presentation of key dimensions from the same standard, expressed in fractions of an inch. A typical bicycle chain uses narrow one-half pitch chain. The width of the chain is variable, and does not affect the load capacity. The more sprocket wheels at the back wheels can find space the narrower the chain. Hub gear or single-speed bicycles use one-half x one slash eight chains. Typically chains with parallel shaped links have an even number of links, with each narrow link followed by a broad one. Chains built up with a uniform type of link, narrow at one and broad at the other end, can be made with an uneven number of links, which can be an advantage to adapt to a special chain heel distance, on the other side such a chain tends to be not so strong. References Bibliography, Green, Robert E. A. L., Machineries Handbook, New York, New York. USA, Industrial Press, ISBN 978-0-8311-2575-2. External links, The Complete Guide to Chain, Chain and Depth.